I lost someone that was very important to me. Someone I knew my whole life and someone that I actually carry his name with me. It was my grandfather, Glenn. And I've introduced you to him before. I've talked about him. And what I wanted to share with you is how he lived his life. It isn't death that defines us, but it's how we live our lives. And I wanted to talk about just as an idea of how when we live our lives authentically, we're able to overcome our fears and we're able to find purpose in our lives. And the three stories I want to share very quickly represent how he did that through service, vulnerability, and love. To begin with service, I don't believe in coincidences. I think things happen for a reason. I think we own our choices. And for him, he saw their value in serving not only God but his country. And so in his mid-20s, he decided, I'm going to go and serve in the military. And around that same time, he went on his mission for his church. And in that, he went to Austria. Around that time, World War II was breaking out. And so him and a few other people had to be moved from their mission to a separate mission nearby. And along with that, a young girl was moved to the mission home to help out as well in her hopes to eventually immigrate to Canada. He eventually caught up with that woman later in life and brought her back down to Idaho and married her. And that individual was my grandmother, Emmy. Service defines us, but vulnerability is what really makes it have passion. It's doing it for the right reasons. It's putting yourself out there. It's doing and following your dreams. With my grandfather, he focused on those types of things. Sometimes he liked to capture them. In fact, one of the little things that we carry in our family is, I'm not going to leave you anything in material wealth, but I'll leave with you memories. And so him, he always carried a camera. Sometimes he focused on the wrong things. For instance, the side view, cam- side rear mirror instead of the actual landscape. But the idea is that he wasn't afraid to chase his dreams. He wanted to see New York. He was a farm boy. So what did he do? He grabbed a notepad and his camera, hopped, upon, hopped on top of a train, and bummed his way to New York and back. He was the type of person that wasn't afraid to take chances. And again, the last story I'm going to share is one that's very personal to me, and it's about love. There was no one that he loved more than his wife, Emma. And the night that he died, a little less than a decade ago, it wasn't like any other Sunday night. It was the same. They had family dinner. After dinner, they played games. The person that won the night was the person that won rock, paper, scissors at the end of the night, not who actually won the game. That way, even the little kids could win. But the point was is that after he kissed his wife, told her that he loved her, and started to walk up the stairs to go to bed, his heart burst, and he died before he hit the floor. For me, it's not so much those different things. It's the fact of how do you want to be remembered? You have one life to live. Be yourself. Serve the people around you. Help them see who you are and love the people you know. Live a life worth remembering.